Hi, I'm Jody Kerrigan, Senior Keeper at Zoo Atlanta. Here at the zoo, we proactively train our gorillas for preventative methods. We put together this video as a reference for gorilla cardiac ultrasounds. We'll talk about our voluntary training program, what views to obtain when working with a sonographer, and how to submit these exams to the Great Eight Heart Project. Zoo Atlanta currently houses the largest gorilla collection in the United States. At the time this video was made, Zoo Atlanta houses 22 gorillas, 16 of which are trained for awake cardiac ultrasounds. The youngest is six, and the oldest is 52. Our training program generally begins with an ape that is trained to present his or her chest to the cage mesh. We train the gorillas to present for two positions. The first position is chest straight against the mesh, and the second position is left side flush against the mesh. Good boy. We also train for left hand up and left hand down. Next, we desensitize them to a cap PVC rod that acts like a mock probe. Apply pressure to the chest, adding in rotating and turning movements that mimic how an ultrasound probe will be used. Use slow, gradual movements. If you're fortunate enough to have access to a broken probe, you can always use that instead. Next, we introduce the conducer gel for desensitization. The gel takes a lot of getting used to by the apes and has proved to be one of the hardest steps of training. Continue the training step of applying pressure while rotating and turning. We use a fetal Doppler during training for various reasons to obtain voluntary heart rates. Heart rate variability is an indicator of heart disease in humans. It is possible that it could also be an indicator in gorillas. Obtaining voluntary heart rates regularly might help diagnose heart disease. Our goal is to obtain voluntary heart rates once a month. Having an idea of what normal is for an individual is important. Keep in mind that there is no established normal values for resting heart rate in gorillas, so this is just a way in which you can have a better understanding of what is going on with the specific individual you work with. There are three ways we obtain images, through the mesh of the enclosure, using a modified porthole cover seen here. The vertical bars allow you to angle the ultrasound probe more than through our two by two mesh. And lastly, here are images of our reverse sleeve. The reverse sleeve is beneficial for protruding chests or pigeon-chested animals that don't allow the chest to be flushed to the mesh. It's also very helpful for geriatric gorillas where arthritis prevents them from holding their chest flushed to the mesh. We use two different training methods of holding. Hold, release, reward, where holding the position is rewarded after a specific duration of time, and the end is indicated by using a training clicker followed by food reward. The other technique is continuous feed using juice or food rewards continuously for the duration of the hold, which is a great distraction method to keep them from picking at the gel and the probe. Since the gorillas are used to training with specific keepers, and because the keepers are more in tune with subtle behavioral variations in our apes, we have the keeper hold the ultrasound probe in position while the sonographer communicates where she wants the probe and collects the data needed. Keepers usually are able to pick up on when an animal might be aggressive. Keep the communication simple between the sonographer and keeper. For example, use the terms angle up, angle down, angle down towards your right foot, scan, rotate to two o'clock. Zoo Atlanta owns a portable ultrasound machine. We use the GE Vivid Eye for all of our echoes. We practice with the Doppler and the sonographer three times before we actually start using the machine. On the third working day together, our veterinarians come and watch the session with the machine and clear us to work together, unsupervised from then on. This is mainly done for liability purposes to ensure that the keeper and sonographer have a good and safe working relationship when working with the animals. One of the most profound impacts on our training program was establishing a partnership with the sonographers from Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, which is also called CHOA. We began with 10 interested pediatric cardiac sonographers and within a year had identified two sonographers that were dedicated to coming to the zoo every week or every other week for ultrasound training. Sonographer Bobby Boyd keeps track of our cardiac echoes. It is not often possible to get every view needed for a complete exam during one training session, so we will mark down which views were obtained for quick and easy reference at the next training session. This book keeps track of what images are needed with which animals, which animal is due for their echo, previous forms, and the reference image. Having one person keep track of this information is to maintain consistency. For the reference image, we use pictures of ape chests to mark where it is easiest for the keeper to access certain views. 
It may not be exact every time, but it gives you a great reference point as to where to start and definitely saves time. The four views needed to be obtained include the short axis, apical four chamber, apical two chamber, and parasternal long axis. Once the necessary views are obtained, the sonographer fills out the grade eight part project submission form shown here. This cardiovascular examination form can be submitted in two ways. It can be mailed to the Grade 8 Heart Project or it can be submitted to Marietta Dendo electronically. The second page of the form is the anesthesia and blood pressure measurement. All this information can be obtained from either the veterinarian or one of the vet techs. The third page is the responsibility of the cardiac sonographer. You need to describe whether it was an awake or an anesthetized exam, a thoracic, transthoracic, or a transesophageal exam. The first section is the description of the left ventricular internal diameters and wall thickness. Ejection fraction and fractional shortening can be calculated from an M mode or a Simpson's biplane. The next section is the Doppler assessment, the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, the aortic valve, and the pulmonary valve. This section is just additional information that I can obtain. If I can do tissue Doppler imaging, I'll go ahead and put those values in there. Any annular measurements, I'll include those as well. The Great Ape Heart Project maintains an international database of cardiac exams for gorillas, orangutans, chimpanzees, and bonobos. We recommend performing and submitting a complete awake ultrasound every six to nine months. We accept anesthetized exams at any point. Just be sure to include the ape's age, anesthesia report when applicable, and the echo itself when submitting the exam. Exams that are submitted without an echo will be recorded in our database, but will not receive written feedback from the Grade 8 Heart Project. We'll use these exams to compare with future exams that are submitted for that animal. Exams that are submitted with an echo will be reviewed by our cardiac specialist, and a written report will be returned to the treating veterinarian. Any treatment recommendations will be included in the report. Here is a voluntary cardiac ultrasound session from start to finish. The training sessions in the beginning will take some time while you find the area on the chest that works for obtaining the correct images and work on keeper sonographer communication. For more information, please visit grade8partproject.org or zooatlanta.org. For training questions, feel free to contact me at jkerrigan at zooatlanta.org.